Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. The next 10 minutes are inspired by a swimming pool and a conversation I had a long time ago. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the engine. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. I think it's 98 degrees outside. It's not one of those nice, comfortable afternoons. It's one of those, oh my God, get out of the sun afternoons. And it's easy to see why. I'm Mexican, so I don't really burn. I was outside all morning working on a project, and my wife could literally only come out for about 10 seconds to look at it, and then she had to go find some shade because she, she withers like our kale plants. She's Irish. And, and man, thank God. Because look, the project I was working on this morning is, is a swimming pool. It's a cowboy swimming pool, a stock tank pool. It's awesome. So we got a stock tank from a farm supply place that's two feet deep and eight feet in diameter. It's a circular pool. So it's like one of those big circular pools that they use, or rather circular tanks, that they use for cattle, like cattle when they want water or things like that. Now, look, we don't, we don't have a very large backyard, and we certainly don't have the money for a pool. But a stock tank pool, when you're dealing with like a six-year-old and a three-year-old, it's perfect. So what you have to do is you get your eight-foot stock tank, and you got to plumb it. We got an, uh, an above background pool filter, which is awesome. It's going to work perfectly. We, we actually amazingly got a propane tank water heater. So we're going to be able to turn this 700 gallon stock tank into an eight foot hot tub, which is pretty cool. But as responsible parents do, they say, okay, well, what, what could go wrong? Pretty much everything, <laughs> pretty much everything could go wrong with this, but, but we worry about the safety of our boys. First and foremost, you know, leaks, fine. You know, water doesn't get hot enough, fine. I don't really care. But neither one of us ever want to have to have a conversation about a kid getting trapped in the pool or hitting his head or something like that. That's a real thing. So I, of course, say, okay, look, I will make a top that's impenetrable. I'll stand in the middle of it, and if it doesn't hold my weight when I'm standing in the middle of it, we'll make a different one. So I get to work, get to work. I get redwood slats, big like fence boards. And I also get some two by fours and I'm, I spend hours in the sun and it is oppressive heat. I mean, like I was, it looked like I had jumped in a pool by the time I was done with this thing. And, and I got done with it and I was pretty happy. I was feeling kind of sick cause I think I was dehydrated. I was pretty whacked out, but I was pretty happy with it. And my wife comes over in her little 10 second appraisal, says it looks good, but I know, I know there's something bothering her. She's very kind and, and doesn't give me the honest, honest feedback always right away. And I said, okay, like, look, just get it out. What is it? And she said, well, look, you have these redwood fence boards that go across and then you have redwood two by fours over the top screwed down to hold everything in place. I said, yeah. It's like, well, why are the two by fours on top where we can see them? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, look, there's, there's the beautiful redwood fence boards. Those are all nice and flat and even. And then you have these redwood two by fours going across them. Why not just have those on the underside so we can't see them? So all it looks like is a redwood top fence boards. No, no two by fours. And damn it, man. I looked at it and I just thought, ah, oh, son of a gun. Okay. Okay. I can do it. I can do it. And I did it. I did it. And it made me think back to a conversation I had with a very good friend when I was about 23. Uh, he was a, a tutoring client of mine, but very bright and very successful in business. And I asked him if I could take him out to take him out to lunch and he's a great guy he was like yeah sure I'll take you out to lunch I'm like no 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 I'll, I'll take you and by the way for all of my students if you meet somebody that you respect and you admire offer to take them out to lunch you have no idea what you'll learn here I am 15 16 years later talking to you about something so we were discussing what my goals were with tutoring and and what my goals were kind of in life and one of his first questions was 
do you have a significant other? I said, yeah, I got a, I got a girlfriend. And he's like, are you engaged? And I was like, well, uh, I think I'm going to be. And he's like, oh, he starts making this big deal. And I'm kind of wondering like, well, yeah, ha ha. I got a girlfriend and I'm going to get engaged and married. So like, what do you mean? He said, look, if you have a girlfriend and you make a mistake, there's at least one other person who knows you made that mistake. I was like, yeah. He was like, if you got married, at least two other people know. Your wife and her mom. <laughs> and I started laughing about that. And he said, yeah, but look, really, if you're not the type of person that can make a mistake and weather criticism. You only have two options if you want to go down this course of action. If you want to try to be successful, you only have two options. You can either ditch the girlfriend, ditch the wife, give it a go, or you can give up and you cannot pursue, pursue business. And I thought about that. I was like, what? What are you saying? But now that I've been at this for almost two decades, I think he's right. I think as crazy as that sounds, he's absolutely right. And look, nobody likes to be wrong, right? Like, imagine me working on this pool, okay? And I get it all finished, and it's just me. I don't have a wife. I don't have kids. But I got me, and I got some weird friend who wants to come and go in my stock tank pool because it's hot. You know, we'll hang out, dip our toes in. And, and he comes over. I'm like, this is my stock tank pool. He says, great. We jump in. That's it. But the two-by-fours that were on top of the lid, on top of the redwood slats that I made, I never even had the perspective. I never even had the thought that this should be underneath. In reality, today, my wife asked me, why did you put them on top? I didn't have an answer. I was like, I don't, that's just what I, how I designed it. Like, I don't, what do you mean? And, and I was able to flip them. That's fine. And it worked out. It's totally fine. But what if it wasn't totally fine? What if I wasn't the type of person who could weather some criticism? What if just by my wife asking me, why did you do this? What if I got lost my cool and got really upset about it? What about that? Where would I be? Well, if that was our relationship, we probably wouldn't have the things we have. We wouldn't have the stock tank pool that's going to be filled up tomorrow morning and be awesome for our kids. We wouldn't have all the things I've built over the years. And if that's who I was, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Because truthfully, it's one thing to know that you've made a mistake. It's one thing to say something stupid in your head or say it out loud and nobody hears and you just realize how dumb it is. And look, we all do that. Everybody, everybody has stupid things rattling around in their brains. That's not a question. The question is whether you have the guts to share it with somebody. I'm approaching episode 100. And that's just of the random meandering thoughts, right? If I didn't have the guts to make mistakes and say stupid things, I wouldn't have even published the first one. Now, this is not necessarily a gift to the world. <laughs> Let me be clear. I don't consider this podcast like a fantastic thing yet. But it's something. It's something and I'm getting better at it. And people tell me that they really appreciate it. And that makes it worth it. That makes it worth it. And it's here because 
I don't care who sees me screw up. I don't care who catches me in, in a mispronunciation of something or saying something dumb. I don't edit these. It's just one take. This is it. This is who I am. And because I'm willing to do that, I have people who say, you inspired me this week. And I have a stock tank pool at home that my kids are going to swim in tomorrow. And if you can just get a little bit closer, if we can all get a little bit closer to doing that, to just being who we are, to exposing ourselves and our imperfections and our wrongs and our idiot thoughts to other people, yeah, we'll probably feel dumb on a more regular basis. But you know what? we also may get some awesome stuff out of it. So the next time you're thinking about doing something or saying something or trying something and you're worried about exposing yourself, just think about all of the things that are great that could come of it. Think about all the things that you can't even conceptualize that could come of it. Don't focus on the one little stupid thing, which is some person seeing something you didn't think of or pointing out something you did wrong. Because the end, none of that stuff matters anyway. I'm Matt Todd. This is the engine that drives me. Go out and crush it.